Composed, a novella by J. E. Novotny, Part 5 Nathan insisted on walking Camilla home after the performance that night. It was just as well. This way she couldn't be tempted to run off to the forest in the dead of night. He treated her with a strange deference now, half mocking it seemed at one moment, then fully serious in the next. He put her cloak over her shoulders for her before they walked into the chilly evening air. Camilla lived close to the theatre, as did Nathan. They lived, in fact, in the same building. Camilla had the apartment on the third floor, while Nathan had a bedchamber and private bath on the second floor. He shared a kitchen with the other residents of the second floor. Camilla sometimes felt that her living space was extravagant for her means, but Nathan, who handled her finances, assured her that it was within her means and that it was best all around for her to have such quarters. "'I suppose you will receive an invitation for tea from the Empress soon,' Nathan said. They paused together at the foot of the stairs leading up to Camilla's apartment. "'I suppose so,' Camilla said wearily. She shook herself and lifted her shoulders from their hunched position. "'Best get my beauty rest while I can if I'm to be a noble woman as well as a working woman,' she added with forced gaiety. Nathan smiled at her tenderly. He leaned forward and kissed her forehead before turning and walking into his room at the far end of the hall. Camilla frowned after him, but only for a moment. She was too tired to worry about Nathan's increasingly strange behavior towards her. The performance and the shock of being called Lady by the Emperor himself had left her shaky. She had actually welcomed Nathan's arm supporting her as they came up the stairs, and she leaned heavily on the banister up the remaining flight. The next morning was blissfully free of obligations, and Camilla slept late. She awoke to the sound of someone knocking on the front door. She threw on a dressing robe before going to answer it. She found the landlady, who inhabited the first floor, holding a scroll tied with a gilt ribbon and attached to a beautiful blue-tipped black rose, a midnight rose. The landlady was openly curious, but she respected Camilla's privacy too much to pry. Camilla read the sheets of music like a letter, occasionally humming a few notes. It was even better than the last piece, more mature and nuanced. Like the first, it was a solo. Dissatisfied with the humming, Camilla began vocalizing, softly at first, and then more vibrantly as the music commanded. There was a knock at the door, and then Nathan entered without waiting for her reply. She hadn't bothered to lock it after greeting the landlady. In fact, she rarely locked the door. She felt safe enough in her own home, surrounded as she was by many people within screaming distance. Locked or unlocked, she did not like that Nathan entered without permission, and she had half a mind to say so, but she bit back the words. She would only be haughty and angry if she brought it up now, and he would not listen to her about it if she spoke that way. She would bring it up with him later. I heard you singing and couldn't resist coming up to have a listen. You don't mind, do you, darling? Camilla gritted her teeth at the endearment, which she decided she would also bring up later. I was just vocalizing instead of pulling out my violin, just trying to get an overview of the music. What music? Camilla handed him the sheets. Nathan didn't play much anymore, but he could still mentally hear the notes he read. He frowned as he read. Another work from your anonymous admirer, he asked without finishing reading the piece. He handed it back to her with a look of indifference so feigned that Camilla could re read its falsity with ease. I can only assume they come from the same person, but I've no idea who is writing them. A half-truth that turned into a full-blown lie. She surprised herself with that one. But then, what business was it of Nathan's who wrote music for her? He was her manager, and technically, legally, on paper, her guardian. An unmarried woman with no living relatives required a legal guardian by law, as if a woman was incapable of looking after herself without the aid of a man. On the other hand, it did help tremendously not having to deal with her own bills and employment as Nathan handled all of that, but she viewed it as a purely business arrangement. He had no say over other parts of her life. She tasted the lie in the back of her throat at this thought as surely as she tasted the lie she just told Nathan. "'Well, it's very beautiful,' he said, somewhat reluctantly. "'And after the Emperor's endorsement of the first song, I suppose we should be grateful that he's chosen to write for you.' "'Could be a woman.' Camilla said with a shrug. Let's not jump to conclusions. Fair enough, he said with a low chuckle that set Camilla on edge again, just as she was beginning to relax. Well, I'll leave you to it, I suppose. 
unless you'd like to join me for breakfast. I thought of walking around the corner to the bakery. Oh, that sounds lovely. I'll meet you downstairs in, say, ten? When they returned from eating buttery croissants and sipping strong black tea, there was an imperial messenger waiting for them in the foyer of their apartment building. His gold and sky-blue embroidered livery was unmistakable. As soon as they entered, he approached Camilla with a low bow and extended a silver tray bearing an envelope. Lady Camilla was scrawled in elegant script across the envelope face. I am to your way to reply, lady, the messenger said. Camilla returned to the entryway table where ink and pens were kept for such purposes, along with some ancient stationery, the top page of which was caked with dust. Camilla used the tarnished silver letter opener and read the message inside quickly. The invitation to tea had come sooner than she had expected, much sooner, and she had not expected her guardian to be included in the invitation. But Nathan would be pleased, and it would be nice to have him with her in the strange environment. She took one of the lower pieces of paper from the stationary pad and took a couple of deep breaths to steady her hand before writing her acceptance for both of them. There were no envelopes available, and Camilla was certain she had none in her room. It couldn't be helped. She folded the response in thirds and held it out to the messenger. He bowed, smiled, and slipped past Nathan to exit the building. As he left, Camilla took note of the cracks in the paint of the foyer walls, the water stains on the ceiling tiles, the mud on the carpet. Her face burned with sudden shame. How could the emperor have given her a noble title so effortlessly? And what did it matter? Titles did not make her wealthy, did not make her mistress of her own fate, and did not protect her from the need to play for her keep. With these thoughts heavy in her mind, Camilla handed the Empress's invitation to Nathan, and then she excused herself to her rooms. She wanted to sit with her thoughts for a while, but there was really no time. She was scheduled for tea with Lady Ingrid, and she needed to change. Camilla did not look forward to the afternoon. Her one consolation was that she would have time to slip out to the clearing the next afternoon. She hoped her anonymous composer would be there.